and the fan, the example is unknown. Two unknowns at the same time doesn't make it easy for the child. So you first introduce fan, if you have to. First of all, in Ladakh, no fan. <laughs> Definitely, maybe fire, F for fire. So the child should, it should become second nature to call it fire also, apart from R or me in Ladakhi. He should, she should be calling it fire. And then if F comes, that's second unknown, but one by one. First, we call it fire also is an unknown, so that was resolved. And then, yes, this introduces us to the sound F or F and the letter, the squiggle F. So one unknown at a time helps. And therefore, I'll not make it long, but I'll just say that in the new scheme of things of 5 plus 3 plus 3 plus 4, I think in the first five years, first two to three years, it should be only about their local languages, definitely. That too, not written, not written. Only about being very vocal, very uh, confident, very curious, and giving them all the, you know, gross and fine motor skills of writing when it comes uh, to writing, reading, reading readiness, I would say, and then introduce the examples from their local languages. Scandinavia, for example. We, while we in India introduce reading and writing at three, or if possible, you would do at two and one, I don't know how far they go uh, backwards, but <laughs> In Scandinavia, they introduce letters only at seven, and they do very well, very well, best in the world, because they get introduced to reading and writing when their minds are ready. So perhaps in our new system also, it should not be obsessed with letters and letters. Letters are a very new, recent development. It should not be confused with education or learning. Letters are a tool, so what? So what? It's not schooling, it's not education. So first we do, maybe in the first one or two years, a lot of reading, writing, readiness, and uh, introduction of the words. And then at the same time, develop English, because English happens to be the medium at higher stages. So develop English as a bilingual language that they acquire. Then we, we introduce A and B and C, or they'll just pick up. You don't have to simplify it. Their minds are complex enough to pick up uh, from lots of exposure. Then we'll have children who have naturally acquired life. Children always do. Children left to themselves will learn uh, without us having to do it. So making it child-driven, Onus is on the child to learn. That happens when you have curiosity and confidence intact. If we, in the process of doing that, yeah, uh, destroy their uh, confidence or curiosity, we'll be doing much more damage. So I just wanted to share that we should have a very logical, systematic way of introducing literacy, first in their own language, then in other languages, Hindi or uh, English by systematically introducing the speaking of the language, comprehension, and then finally literacy in that language. It doesn't take long at all. Even if you were taught, um, say, the French or German or Russian, you won't take more than two weeks or so to write the letters. So that's how long it should take when it is your second or third language. We shouldn't waste a childhood on introducing an unknown language uh, before the known is used. Your mother tongue, your local context is like a great asset to start with. It's like telling an army of soldiers, drop all your weapons and pick up these new guns and fight. They cannot, you know. You have to have tools that you are familiar with to unravel new unknown territories which is what we don't do. We just follow a ritual of uh, thinking that English is the language and literacy is education. Neither is true, I'm afraid. I think if we focus on building up their, 
um, neural network through stimuli, and then you introduce anything, it won't take long. This is what uh, personal experience I thought I would share. Thank you very much. I want to talk. the farm seeing seeds go in the ground, roots go down, shoots come up and leaves unfurl without having to bother with L-E-A-F-E <laughs> and L-E-A-V-E-S for some strange reason, yeah? <laughs> Rather than L-E-A-F-S. <laughs> this is what we cage their minds with illogical things and then they lose confidence that it doesn't work logically. Beautiful, beautiful, but all such things actually shake a child's confidence and that's what you need. And curiosity to learn about. So curiosity helped me. Of course, in the beginning my mother, after I was proficient and, you know, vibrant in my own mother tongue, with my grandmother listening to stories, with my mother, with my village neighbors, she also taught me to read and write, my mother tongue, very happy. So till nine years of age, I didn't go to any school and spoke nothing but Ladakhi. But when your own mother tongue foundation is strong, it's is like mother's milk, almost, intellectually speaking, you are able to pick up languages any time. I didn't speak any language other than Ladakhi till nine, but I went ahead and learned some nine languages. It took me hardly six months to a year to learn a new language. And when you have that curiosity and the sound foundation, it's very easy. My village was on a tourist trail, and we would have tourists, and I would pick up French from them, English from them, then Hindi and all such languages when you have a uh, grasp of things and confidence that yes, you can do, you can do. Unfortunately, at nine, I was dragged into some school. <laughs> and there ended my true learning, oh. L-E-A-F and all that. And I was treated almost like a retarded child <laughs> because I spoke no other language, so they would put me the back benches I didn't ever understand why it would help me to keep me away from the teachers. Yeah, I always thought it would help me to be close. But for some logic of that kind, they did that. And uh, that was when I was lucky. Most of the time, I was kept outside the door. So today, I say at least that way I was outstanding student. <laughs> wow. Anyway, um, I won't go into too many details, but uh, with the grasp of things around you and the confidence and the curiosity children learn, they need stimulus more than letters and numbers. When they have that, it's on them. The onus is on them. You know, let nature do its job. Our brains are wired to learn. Children's minds are wired to learn. They can't but learn. But we come in between and interfere and, you know, put it together, and uh, then we wonder why they don't learn. So, anyway, um, much later I was dragged into schools. I had a hard time in the beginning, but because of the Sound Foundation, quickly caught up and started doing quite well, even topping classes. And uh, in engineering, while doing engineering, I was, I came face to face with students from Ladakh who were going through, the, the, the so-called fortunate ones who were sent to school, yeah, they were going through real hard time and there was 95% failure in Ladakh uh, in 10th grade boards in those days, 95% failure. And while teaching them, I felt I really need to do something about this system. Before jumping with conclusions and solutions, I tried to understand what was happening in the schools. And then I saw that in the name of schooling, literacy, numeracy, they were handed textbooks from New Delhi in the mountains of Trans Himalayas. And what it becomes then is, as I saw going into schools to understand what was happening, 
one classroom in winter, minus 20 outside, minus 5 in the classroom, all the children were memorizing, F for fan, F for fan. <laughs> <laughs> and, a, <laughs> and a child asks, but sir, what is this uh, weird thing? And the teacher scratches his head and says, son, I don't know, but I'm told it keeps you cool. <laughs> and the children with eyes popping, why does anybody need to be colder than we are? <laughs> so some clever person devised a beautiful theory that children should be introduced to con through concrete things, the abstract things. You know, F is a squiggle. It doesn't mean anything for the child. It doesn't mean anything for us also. It's just a symbol. Why should it be F? It can be anything, but they agreed and gave it this sound, F. Now we are going to introduce it to the child. So somebody said, let's use something familiar to the child. In England, A for apple, because English children always are, you know, around apple. They have lots of apples. So apple made sense. Now to do that in Kerala <laughs> doesn't make any sense. So F for fan in Ladakh does much more damage than any help in deciphering this squiggle F. So that was what was happening. And then I started wondering how did those 5% pass? <laughs> <laughs> more than how 95% fail. So I started uh, teaching and then later together with like-minded people and definitely with the government we started 